Um, I've got bitten by a crackhead at a gig once in Brisbane. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tell me about that. Oh, I was one from the barrier and there was a girl in front of me and this guy was like punching into us and you, you sort of stuck. And then he was carrying on like hitting us and stuff and everybody around it. So she was wrapping him on the knuckles with the drumstick she caught and um, he thought it was me. So he bit me on the shoulder. So I spent the whole concert thinking like, what have I got now? Yeah. I need a tetanus shot. Yeah. I enjoy this, but also I'd enjoy not having, you know, yeah. whatever he's got, Yeah, which I assume is a lot. <laughs> and then he stole the drumstick from her and was like, I'll probably feel bad about this one day, but I don't now. This specific podcast episode has some darker references uh, about some uh, life moments that may not be suitable for a younger audience. And if you had some uh, traumatic experiences yourself and are easily triggered, then this episode may not be for you. Good luck and have fun. Welcome to the Sevo Show. We have Hayden Douglas here, all the way from Queensland. He's a comedian. He thinks he is. Other people think he is too. He's here for French, but he's here to talk shit. He's a metalhead. He likes tattoos, and he doesn't have much hair on his head. That is true. So let's talk about it. Yeah, well, let's talk about the hair. I think that's the most important thing. Mm. It's not a political statement. I have shitty genes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm yeah. not a skinhead. I'm just <laughs> not blessed yes. you know, with any uh, any growth up there. Your hair is making me furious. It's getting there. It's a bit of a- It's looking good, man. Yeah. What are you talking about? It's good. The grow back is great, but the initial haircuts, uh, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. I, I think know. I need to- I used to be uh, like a one. I shaved, yeah. shaved one um, because of rookie day one time uh, at, <laughs> at my footy club. And uh, the rookie day, I was a rookie. Because I just changed clubs and uh, traditionally we uh, get hazed and one of the okay. hazings is get a haircut. And okay. they gave me a good good haircut. So then I just shaved it all off. Came home to the missus and I had my hat on. <laughs> passed out. She was like, it's under your hat. Take your hat off. And I'm like, no. Nah. So do it. Took it off and she shit herself. And then her mum got a buzz cut and just. <laughs> and then she's like, actually, that looks good. Nice. So I was a. Uh, for 12 months, that was a, that was a vibe. Yeah. I, I, this is the only vibe I've got now. Yeah. I, I look like no means no Rogan. Like yeah. it's, it's someone that you don't <laughs> want to see behind you in, a, in an alleyway. Yeah. yeah. So do you, you use public transport? You use the bus to get here? I did today, yeah. Did I'm not a fan of it. Everybody move away from you? Or? Generally. I find that in general. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Oh, I mean, I'm antisocial, so yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, you're antisocial, but you're a comedian. Yeah. That's not a social activity. True. Yeah. Unless you're drinking. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that, 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 then that leads to its own wealth of problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that it does. So how did you get into the, that scene? I was in metal bands for years and um, growing up, you don't really realise – I'm also a bit spectrum so if I don't make eye contact, that's why. That's fine. Um, I, uh, Safe space. I was in bands for years and um, was always a funny cunt, so you just sort of do that. But uh, realistically, you don't really think it's an option, especially I grew up in Queensland and I moved over here and realised that there were um, there were open mics, like there's ways to do it. And then I was like mentally ill, which helps. That's kind of one of the key ingredients. And uh, yeah, I had a nervous breakdown and saw Steve Hughes the day after I got out and was like, I'm going to try that one day. And then I did and still doing it nine years later. Wow. Yeah. So you saw Steve Hughes? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that was that was the catalyst because I was a big big fan of his and um, at the time, like, my whole life had fallen apart, got out of the psych ward, saw him the next day. I was like, I, I really want to try that. And um, just to prove to myself that I wasn't cooked. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, still doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what, what instruments did you play? Uh, you guitar singing? and I was the singer in my band. Cool. So, like, thrash, death metal sort of stuff. Yeah. And was that a way to release your mental stress? I've always just been a creative weirdo. Yeah. And, and But yes, it's the same. I'm just about to release a hip hop album. All those songs in it, you'd be like, this guy, there's no way this guy's a comedian. They're so fucking dark. But that's kind of what, I don't know, that's where the funny comes from. Yeah. And no one just learns to be funny. No. Like you just, you do it because you feel weird or you look weird or yeah. your dad's a dick. Or, there's always some sort of reason for it. Yeah. So what, what brought you to, like, let's go back to before the mental breakdown, yeah. if we can talk about it. Yeah, Because yeah. it's beneficial for other people who yeah. feel like they're going to get through that sort of thing. Yeah, my friend murdered someone and then decided to tell me, which is... Um, what? Yeah. 
Shit. That's why I don't answer the phone, kids, because it could be a bad call. Just ignore it forever. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a great th – that's actually what my show by Polar Rock and Roller is about largely is um, th not that so much but the impact that had. But it, it's a very long story but the, basically he's, he was with a girl who was really depressed and wanted to end her life. Um, she asked him to do it. She'd asked – exes to do it it was a it was a thing that for whatever reason was in her head and obviously the solution wasn't murder or death um the solution was help but that's the solution they went with and it's just a really it's a really sad story because even the the homicide detectives when they were when i was helping them um were like yeah normally we're all high-fiving after something like this but no one wins in this one it's no. just sad uh, but for whatever reason, I was home that day and this is back in 2010, so I was on MSN just to date the story. And uh, I was, you know, I was, I was stoned playing guitar and he's like, hey, man, I've got to tell you something, but you can't tell anyone. I'm like, you know, we're from central Queensland. So it's like he's banged a cousin, you know, it happens. Statistically, it's going to happen. Yeah. I thought it would just be something silly that he was embarrassed of. And uh, yeah, so then that just snowballed this weird chain of events where you're like, what do I do? And uh because no one wants to dog their friends, but there's a line on the dog and your mates thing, you know? Yeah. Murder tends to cross that line. <laughs> so it was like, it was premeditated, but technically, uh, yeah. She wanted it. Yeah. And, and we could prove, uh, not we, but it, that was proven. But it, with those sort of things, it comes down to intent. Yeah. The intent wasn't to hurt. Like, if I just flipped out and like, went full on Joey karate on everyone here and like you all died, but I didn't mean to kill you. I wouldn't get as much time as he got for taking someone's life. Is that because of your bipolar? No, no, it's just the intent factor. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. But maybe I could use the bipolar. Thanks, man. You're helping with my defense for your murder. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> At least I got the footage. <laughs> so your, um, so your mate, yeah. um, he's still locked up. Yeah. Did he get 20? At the time it was 15. Yeah. So, but, who knows? That's minimum. Who knows what happens? Did you speak to him after he yeah, got? I in? Speak, he rings me. Yeah, and you're cool. He, yeah, like, he's the the, the per, like. So the the breakdown side of it came from me not being able to forgive myself. He's never been mad at me. His family's never been mad at me. It was just me that couldn't forgive me. And um, was it because you could have stopped it, or did you feel like you could have stopped it? I th I mean, if he'd called me a week earlier, yeah. Um, but it was the. I'm a pretty liberal guy, like a comic and a muso. You know, I don't tend to rush towards police. Um, I didn't like helping them imprison someone that's one of my best friends and love him like a brother. Yeah. So just it's that like I couldn't get past that that feeling of like I've actually I turned him in. I did it. Mm. I didn't do it. I I all I did was what needed to be done legally, morally, spiritually, however you want to frame it. But I knew all that logically, but couldn't feel it. So how did that unfold after he told you? Uh, well, that, that I was, <laughs> I was stoned already that day. Then um, I, uh, my housemate came home. He's like, would you like a pill? I was like, I never had one before. Will it make me feel better? So he gave me that. Then he's like, would you like a tab of acid? It's like, I've never had that before. Will that make me feel better? And I trusted his judgment and I shouldn't have. Stopped believing in God that night. But because he told me online, I was reading 35 pages of detailed murder confession over and over and over on my first acid trip, which um, would not recommend. It's, uh, you know, generally you want to be looking at pretty colours and walking around a field. Yes. Uh, but so then it was just like, what do I do? What do I do? Called the cops. I was living here. This happened in Queensland. I... Um, Flew the, they asked me if I'd fly back and record tap phone calls and like, yeah, it was just this weird thing that within a space, it was also the same week that my van got destroyed in a hailstorm. My aunt Jill died and I, got, and I got noticed that I was going to lose my house. So it was just like, it was this awful time. Um, but oddly that shit led me here like yeah. today talking to you. Yeah. So I'm not happy about it, but it's what, else, what do you do? You can't change it. No, you can't. So after that, you went, you spiraled down? Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> so, and that was your own thing in, in your own head? Uh, yeah, yeah, more or less. Well, I, I had bipolar and I knew that. Um, and it's always been, there's always been issues around that, but I hadn't been properly diagnosed or treated. Yeah. Um, and then 
coming, I went over there, helped the cops. It's all over the news. Like it's just this whole, fu- this whole thing. And um, then when I got back to Perth, I had no family here. Everyone's over there and I just crumbled. Um, and I remember May 6th, 2010 was when I went into a psych ward for the first time. And I remember that because it's the day after my birthday and I needed to go in on my birthday. But can you imagine getting like happy message, like happy birthday messages from Greg from high school who you haven't spoken to in 10 years, your first day in the nut house? Like, nah. Did you go to Greylands? No, no, I, it was voluntary. So I went to D20 at Charles oh, yeah. Gardner. Wow. Yeah. And um, how does that process work when you're voluntary? You, do, do they? Because I've seen a lot of these movies where you, you, you check in and you end up on some random floor where you have to wait for this platform to come down and you get the scraps. Have you seen that movie? Yeah. That's cooked. That movie's <laughs> fucked. It's, uh, well, this was um, not much. Apparently it's a lot better now, but it was in the basement of the hospital, which is great because you're already feeling wonderful. Sounds amazing. Yourself. Yeah. Uh, you have to go to emergency and basically to go into a public hospital, you have to be at the point where you're going to neck yourself, which I was. Um, and then you... you fuck around there they assess you and then they take you in and you end up in a room like i don't know the size of a, an office um with four to six other people just curtains separating you after that i ended up paying for private health care so i could get better treatment uh because the public system is is fucked man it's yeah. like my room flooded with sewage and then i got moved to another room and the floor is covered in piss and um, there was like aggression in there and I had, I told the head psych like, hey, this guy's being aggressive. If I see him threaten staff or his patients again, I'm going to jump on his back and choke him unconscious and you can deal with him. And he's like, fair enough. Because I'm, I'm a model patient. Like you ne- they've never had shit out of me. I'm there to get well. I'm not there to cause drama. And then the next day I went out for a smoke, came back and that guy's pinned on the ground, getting the jab, going to Greylands. So it's kind of like... Uh, uh, yeah, if, you, if, if you're in a public hospital and you mess up and you're a risk to others, then you go to the naughty corner in Greylands. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. My, uh, my wife used to work at Greylands um, in the cafeteria. Yeah. And um, she's got some stories. I'll bet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, another day. <laughs> I don't know how much I could say. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so when you were in there, how did they get you, make you feel better? Oh, which time? They didn't, the first few. Shit. So I'm just going to have a quick sip. So there's multiple times that you're in the, in the psych ward. About and, eight. And, you know, the broken system. Mm. What happened the first time you checked out? Like how, how did you know or did you just get bored? You don't get an option in a public hospital. So the, the, the weird thing is you've got private – with mental health, you've got private hospitals and public hospitals. A private, a private hospital is like – almost incentivized to keep you there because they make so much money. A public hospital is incentivized to get you out because there's so many people coming in. So you're really straddling this line of like, um, no, neither one is perfect, uh, but I didn't have a choice. I just had to leave when they said I had to leave. Yeah. Um, sure. And I wasn't well. Um, I think out, over the last 12 years, I sp- spent 12 months in total in – Nut houses, so it's weird to think that a tenth of the last twelve years has been in a hospital of some sort. Yeah. And when was the last time you were in one? Uh, late two thousand twenty-one, and I was in that one for seventeen weeks. Wow! Yeah, and that was because of like you just like with with what is it called when you like remission? Uh, there's a bunch of factors like. Um, There's a thing called a repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation. So back in the day, they used to go straight to shock therapy, uh, which is bad. It's inducing a grand mal seizure. People have strokes. A lady I knew, her heart stopped. Um, But now they have this thing where they they put put a thing on your head, they stimulate it with different magnetic frequencies, and it helps open up neural pathways that um, that generally through some sort of sort of so form, that's the word, form of PTSD or whatever over the years, your brain has learned to go from here to here and go that way all the time. And sometimes those aren't, they're not the best ways for the brain to go. You just practice what you know. Yeah. So you get good at thinking bad. And I had this, um, this thing done and you have 30 sessions of it. Um, just kind of feels like a little woodpecker on the side of your head. And uh, you can drive home afterwards. It's nothing like 
shock therapy and it changed my life. Like that was the thing that after doing all the years of psychology, all these groups, all this shit, none of it, it never changed the feeling until I had that because there was something off in my head. And um, So you were tapped and then untapped. Yeah. 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 I was functional though. Like yeah. I was doing gigs while planning to kill myself. Like that's, it's, it's weird and that's hard for people to understand, but I was having good shows. Wow. And uh, <laughs> so re really good shows actually, now that I think about it. Yeah. But felt nothing inside. So you, then you start thinking, what, what, am I, what am I doing? Like why, if this brings me no joy and I don't even care if they're having fun, but they are, like wh why do I bother? Yeah. And yeah, I wasn't sure if I'd do comedy anymore. It was just, just getting through every day was that enough of a challenge. Yeah. So you, you had a, a therapy free 2022? No, in in terms of what therapy? in terms of checking yourself in. Oh yeah, no, no, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I still. It's like anything. It's like fitness. You've psychological fitness. You've got to stay on top of it. You've got to. You got to. It's it's all about understanding what how your brain works, why it works that way, and what what you can cope with, what you can't cope with, and learning how to cope with the things you can cope with and address the things you can't. So it's um. It's a never ending thing, but I like to talk about it. I think my, my friend show, for instance, could be a lot funnier if I didn't tell all those stories in the middle, but I think it's important. Yeah. And um, I've got uh, it's a sort of th up there, I'm thinking, fuck, should I have just done all the funnies like bang, bang, bang? But this is what I want to talk about. It's my life and, and it does help people. And that's, that's, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how close have you come to? Ending your, ending your life? Oh, very close. Like 2021, my plan was too good and I won't say it on here because no. it's, um, but prior to that I was in the noose yeah. in 2000, almost 11 years ago to the day. So it's awesome to be here. Yeah. I'm really happy. Like yeah. could it could this could not exist. I could not exist. My family could be celebrating a sad anniversary right yeah. now. There's a and, quote, there's a quote that I that I've um, heard last year about it. It's a Permanent solution to a temporary problem. Absolutely. Yep. And um, I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Me too. And, but now it's, uh, what, what happens from here? Um, well, it's, it's, I don't even know how to describe it, man. It's like the, the, my whole life was just this dark cloud over me at all times and I don't feel it anymore. And it's actually scary to not have that dark cloud because it was always there. So the, it, the, Grow, waking up in the morning and not being miserable. Mm. Um, Tom Segura has a great bit about it where he's like, do you ever wake up and just think, Jesus Christ, how many days are there? And that was my life from, wow. from like the age of four. Oh, no, probably about seven actually until 2021. So you say back, because that was my next question, going back to your childhood. Yeah. The age of seven is when you first started feeling that? Depression and stuff, yeah. Yeah, because I was – I got – like, uh, <laughs> I got messed with a lot as a kid because I was a trusting kid. And, um, yeah, like kids would just get me into dangerous situations. Like I'm trying to think of an innocuous one, but they told me I loved Ghostbusters and I loved trains when I was four. So somehow that came up at a playground and these kids told me there was one across the road. So I'm like running across a busy intersection trying to find the Ghostbusters train. So th that level of like innocence and, and wanting to – to believe people and believing that people were honest um, and then just sort of taking everything on board. I think I first saw a therapist in grade two because I just, it, the, the, it wasn't working right up there. And um, yeah, it's weird. Were you able to define that initial moment when it started happening? Uh, nah, not really. Nah. No. There's well, a few factors. There's, yeah, a bunch of things. I, I, I really couldn't pinpoint it. What were your parents like in, uh, when you were that, that young? Do you remember? Yeah, dad, uh, very um, – mum's a beautiful person, very supportive. I think the issue that I had with my dad is that he's the worst dad you could ask for and the best dad that you could ask for. You just yeah, think so. of which one was walking through the door. Is he bipolar as well? He's definitely bipolar or borderline. I think borderline – he's been through a lot of abuse. He's also had traumatic, traumatic brain injuries um, and never treated because it's not his problem that you know it's that 
that age bracket, you know, of me, oh, it's not my problem, blah, blah, blah. You just need to just listen to me. So, yeah. my, my brain's fucked, but it's not my problem. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Did it's you, always some, it's a deflection of responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. And when you were like seven, you had that first feeling of the dark cloud above you. Yeah. Oh, a lot of it had to do with him for sure. Yeah. Um, if you can go back to your seven-year-old self, mm. what would you tell him and what would you tell your dad? Uh, I think it'd be easier to tell my seven-year-old self than tell anything to my dad. So I'll say that off the top. <laughs> my seven-year-old self, I'd probably say, you know, the way you would, whether, the, whether your dad says good things about you or bad things about you, they're just his opinions. You need to work out how you feel about you and you need to um, not let people who say mean or hurtful things to you have any power. I'm trying to think of how my seven-year-old self would comprehend what I'd say. Um, with dad, I guess, what could you, I, I mean, do you, re, I'd probably just say, do you realize how much you're fucking up your son right now? And he would probably say, fuck off, who are you? And then I'd say, I'm your son from the future. And he'd say bullshit. And then we get in a fight. <laughs> Is he still around? Yeah. Yeah. When was the last time you talked to him? Uh, a couple of days ago, like via text. It's just, um, I, like I love my dad. I think back to my childhood. He did so many things to make us have a like a good education and all this sort of stuff. But because of that personality disorder that he's got going on, it's like he would walk out of the room and come back a different person. So it'd be, I love you, I'm proud of you, blah, blah, blah. And then it'd be, you're a useless piece of shit five minutes later. So – he, it's the funniest thing is he says about me, where does Hayden get this bipolar from? It's like, well, it's nature or nurture and you're both dickhead. So you <laughs> think about it. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's just strange. It was that constant dichotomy of like, am I, when you boil it down to like childhood thoughts, am I a good boy? Am I a bad boy? I don't know. Yeah. And it's, you were told both all day, every day and your disappointment and he's proud of you and yeah, it's just reaching that point of, uh, I'm sure you probably have your experience with this too, of like accepting that that's how they are. I can't change it. If I want a relationship with them, I'm going to do it on these terms. And if it's not on these terms, see you later. Yeah, I've had very similar experiences. Like my my biological father, I didn't really know him. Okay. Because um, we moved here from Russia when I was seven. Yep. And uh, my mother met my stepdad and he... Um, I haven't spoken to him since before uh, the pandemic and... You stepped out? Yeah. And, um, you know, I boil it down to him being a bit bit narcissistic. Like he's got a job as a prison officer. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. And he changed... He, he got worse when he, when he got that job. Yeah. Because he'd bring his work home. Mm -hmm. Like he wouldn't treat me as a prisoner. Um, but uh, any time that I'd ask him something, he'd be bothered. Yeah. And when you're growing up as a, like a young, young, young kid, or like adolescence as well, mm. especially when I was a teenager, where you're still kind of vulnerable there, where you're, where you're wanting some guidance uh, on, the, on the path to manhood, becoming an adult. Yeah. And I never got that. No. And my mum carried as well. She carried hard. And she taught me shit that uh, still to this day I like reflect back on her because now she needs it, yeah. which is good. Um, but there's an, a lot more flamboyance, a lot of femininity in, in my personality because it was more my mother, which isn't a bad thing. No. But uh, I had to learn the masculinity side of it. Okay. And I can turn the masculinity on if I wanted to, mm -hmm. but it's more of a – it's harder to do, you know? Do you find – so sorry to cut you off. I'm just interested in that point. So for me, I found – I didn't know how to process anger because of the environment I grew up with. Anger was kind of, was the, my role model was my dad. So yeah. it was either, it was either abuse or verbal abuse or physical abuse was his way of expressing anger. Did you find that you didn't really know how to express anger when you were a teenager or w were you in that sort of environment? Um, I mean, I was really never abused in okay. any way. Um, there was never him coming to me or telling me that I was a piece of shit or whatever. Um, there was just no role model in my life at okay. that point. I had my own role models. I had the boys from Blink-182, yeah. you know? They, 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 I got their humor, the humor from them. Yeah. 
the comedians are like Jim Carrey and yeah. and Robin Williams and and you know I'm, I'm not I don't consider myself a comedian but people think I'm funny which is cool. Um, but yeah, the the people that I looked up to were in the music. Yeah, which is what a lot of same. yeah. But um, yeah, I I don't think I don't think uh, my my the way I process anger back then was through footy and through video games. Yeah. I got onto Call of Duty and I'd say everything under the sun, fucking this and shit that <laughs> and and things that are not appropriate anymore. Oh, um, yeah, I know what you mean. I, like Call of Duty <laughs> 20, 2007 lobbies were fucking filth. Oh, yeah. Like we were doing, we were saying shit right now that, it, I don't know if you have heard of this, but like a couple of months ago, they announced that they've, they've recorded, they have all the lobby uh, chats recorded from like, from decades ago. And I'm like, Oh, I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if you're like if you're like sacred group chat um, gets gets <laughs> leaked. leaked, you're fucked. Yeah, but like we need we need to, that's that's how I express my <laughs> my anger, and my anger wasn't really on anyone. It was just a I don't know. It was just like a release. W- w- was it more of like an ang- like a frustration? Yeah, yeah, frustration. Like I get really frustrated of inanimate objects or when things are just not working for no reason. Um, and I can give you daily examples of this shit. Like yeah. yesterday I wanted to watch LeBron James hit his uh, milestone, you know, overtake Kareem. Yeah. And I couldn't find a stream. Okay, fair enough. And then I went to the NBA itself. And I was like, I wonder if they've got a seven-day trial. They did. I was like, you beauty, I'll just get the fucking seven-day trial and cancel it after this game. Got it. Put my car details in put a little notification saying cancel this in like three days so I don't forget. Put the game on and I can only hear it. It's all blacked out. Can't see it. Okay. And I'm like, what the fuck? And that shit frustrates me. Like just those little (laughs) things, but they stack up. Do do you think that's like you being a kind person and not wanting to take frustration out on people so you pick – those moments mm. to let it out. Yeah. Oh man, I get frustrated at people. Like ask Ryan how frustrated I get. I don't get frustrated at him, but like these moments that come to me with people, like for example, work, what do I do for work? I never really thought I'd be doing it. Like mm-hmm. consulting people with marketing and shit. But the people I have to deal with <laughs> who are just stupid. Yeah. Like I would I would send an email to someone and I'd be like, hey, um, here is my offer. It's a minimum of six months and they come back to me saying, yep, we'd like to take this offer. We'd like to do a one-month trial. Now I have to reify to them saying, hey, as per the last email, <laughs> you're a the, fucking idiot. The, as per the last email says you're a fucking idiot without saying it. So, but- that's, <laughs> so that's, you know, I, I don't do meditation. Maybe I should. But I get up every morning and it's a reset. I don't have depression. I don't know what it is. I can't say, you know. Apparently, like another article I read last year, apparently they've disproven uh, chemical depression. There's no such thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's all a situational thing. I read that and I agreed with part of it yeah. and disagreed with part of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but for me, I can't say shit on that because I've only observed what depression is not like for me. Yeah, like I have a fucking bad day. I get overwhelmed, and I I get I've had a couple of breakdowns before. Yeah, and those breakdowns are just feelings of overwhelming, and I'm like, fuck this shit. I'm just gonna sit there and do nothing. Yeah, but then the next morning it doesn't carry over. Yeah, see, I couldn't see that's that, I'm blessed. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm stoked with that, but I think it's because something it's to do with my memory as well. Like I've got good long term memory. Things that I remember, you, you people go, how the fuck do you remember that? Yeah. But there's short-term memory that I don't have and they're like, fuck, is, what's his name again? You know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but like there's it in the moments. And then I think there's some sort of ADHD or ADD or something involved in that. I don't want to get diagnosed. I don't think I need to. But like I just forget shit. Mm-hmm. And then later on I'm like, oh, yeah, I was supposed to do that. Oh, well, it's not a problem anymore. That does you know? have benefits. <laughs> it does have benefits. If you've got the shits and you forget about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get the shits, yeah. but then I forget I have the shits and I don't have the shits. Fuck, that's awesome. Yeah. This is like the most positive dementia yeah. of all time. 
<laughs> That's me. It's like, fuck, Sev, you're so angry yesterday. I was like, I don't even remember what I was angry about, yeah. you know? Um, but but I've uh, but it I think because because when I was younger, I would carry that over. Yeah. But it was a it was a sense of reflection that I learned about mm -hmm. the Socratic method is what yeah. I learned about, I which find is that helpful. huge value. Yeah. Because then you ask yourself, okay, why am I angry? Mm -hmm. Is this in my control right now? Can I do something about it right now? No, I cannot. Should I still be angry? The fact that I don't have control over it. No. Problem solved for now. Yeah. Move on. You know, something. and yeah, the, but the only time that it frustrates me ongoing is if I have something that I need to achieve, but it's no longer in my control. The ball's not in my court yeah. and I'm waiting for someone else. It's incubating in someone else's court and they're just fucking around with it. And I'm just like, you're a moron. But when you find someone that gets it, that yeah. just, that just gets on with it and understands and it's just like, yes. Yeah. But everybody has their own journey. Everyone has their own life. So at the end of the day, I just want to kind of just almost do it all myself. Yep. And if I have to delegate, I will. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. And there's no greater feeling like for anyone that's wanting to, to be a, a broadcaster, a comic, a muso, there's no greater feeling than looking in your bank and seeing money that you've earned just through being you. Yes. It's not, a, it's not a degree I have, yeah. it's nothing. And I've still got a day job. I ha it's, a, it's a good job, but I hate it. I'm not built for that. Yeah. All I want to do is what stand do do? up and music. I'm, I'm a receptionist. Wow. No, I work at a hotel and my official job title is, is receptionist, which is hilarious if you've ever seen me. Do you wear a suit? Yeah, I wear like the button up and all that. Yeah, Amazing. It's, it's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's so... Before that, I was a security guard at the airport, okay, that's which better. makes more sense. That's better. Yeah. My, a, a comic the other day said I have resting bouncer face. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's pretty spot on. <laughs> resting bouncer face. That's great. Yeah. Show me your resting bouncer face. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's how I walk around the streets. Just yeah. Last time I was in Perth, I have that face when I'm walking around Northbridge at night because I just want people to leave me alone. Yeah. And some guy came up and said, hey, you got any gear? And I thought, oh, no, I've, <laughs> I've lent too far into this face. <laughs> I'm attracting what I hate. <laughs> Oh, you know, you, you know what you should do? You should like carry a, around like pouches of protein powder or some creatine samples <laughs> and just give it to them. Yeah. That'd be funny as fuck. Or carry your fucking fringe show tickets and be like, here. <laughs> yeah, put, put, put it in with powder so they have to dig <laughs> through it. I don't, what do I want meth heads at my show for? Just numbers, I guess. Yeah, true. <laughs> I am needy and desperate. That's why I do this. That's a good point. Any meth heads, please come to my show. <laughs> You'll get free protein powder. Protein powder. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's if I it. had any other powder, I'm not sharing it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's fair enough. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so bouncer, receptionist, comedian. I've done all sorts of stuff, man. Bipolar. How old are you? 37. Nice. So good innings. Getting old. Yeah. Know, yeah. Feeling it. Getting there, and uh, do you have any kind of goals that you that you want to achieve in the next twelve months to five years? I'm going to the US for a tour later this year, so cool. looking forward to that. Yeah, doing a lot of weird places, um, a lot of the places in the Midwest. So we're doing like North Dakota, South Dakota, Illinois, Iowa, Missouri, Kentucky. Like we're doing a lot of rednecky places, which I'm really excited about. Because I just want to see it. Your look as well. It's like. Oh, I need to see it. I, I watch the news. I know who they voted for. Like my friend that I'm touring with did a show. They had a Make America Great Again banner beside the stage. To a life-size Donald Trump and the wife, Melania. What, that's the name of it. And then the Confederation flag, yep. I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and he's, he's, a, he's from Texas, but he's a Democrat. He's very much not that side of the yeah. fence. And he's like, dude, I'm doing a show here. You're going to fucking had the weirdest time over here. Yeah. And then they sent me a footage the other day of a show they were doing where they had to clear snow because it's, you know, freezing cold. And they had a flamethrower clearing the snow out the mm. front of the venue. Flamethrower? Yeah. Like one of those Elon Musk ones. What the fuck? And then afterwards they're sh uh, doing promo shots with machine guns. I'm like, this is, is this I've been to 16 countries. It's the first time I'm scared. So <laughs> Southwest is fuck. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. he, he travels. He's a comic. Travels with a loaded pistol in the glove box. Of course. And he's ex-Navy. And it's like, why does, why does that guy need a pistol? It's like, he's like, because I'm in America and I don't trust them. 
Yeah, that's crazy. So yeah. anytime I think of America and the Southwest and, you know, traveling around, I just think of the, the latest Borat um, yeah. one where he did that co- through that throughout the COVID thing. Yeah. That was fucking hilarious. It, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm scared. To, yeah. and to go to the land of the free and the home of the brave. Like, you've got to be brave to go there. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a movie out there. Yeah. It is the Wild West. Um, and I, I mean, I, go, I used to go to America all the time, you know, like at least once a year um, to a point. And uh, I took my, my girlfriend at the time there, which I proposed to, mm-hmm. now my wife, um, 2019, October. Okay. And I proposed to her in New York. New York's great. Yeah. Like it's so vibrant, so many different people. If there was a place I could go to frequently, it'd be New York. Yeah, and do my interviews there because I've seen some cool shit there. Yeah, yeah. Go over to the west to Cali. Cali's cool. Yeah. You know, they're they're pretty they're pretty hipster there, and the whole of California reminds me of just Fremantle, but with obnoxious accents and uh, a little bit less. I could see that. Yeah, a little yeah. bit less on the skin, which is cool. Um, but anywhere in between, I haven't really visited much. I've never been to Texas apart from like a stopover in Houston airport. Um, and I've never been to those Southwest country, uh, uh, states. Okay. I want to, but at the same time, I also do not because they're yeah. crazy, man. Yeah. The thing I'm looking forward to the most is the um, Noah's Ark experience. Someone's built a quote unquote life-size Noah's Ark where they show you how the dinosaurs were on there and the earth's 10,000 years old. And I just, I have to see that. Yeah. That's going to be hilarious. Someone I know, I can't mention who it is, but <laughs> they went there and, and they're, they're a bit older as well. They're in yeah. their 60s. Oh, no. They went there about 10, 15 years ago and they would see the morbidly obese people on those electric scooters. Yeah. And he took photos of them like a tourist. Like, oh my God, I've never seen that before. <laughs> oh, there's another one. Oh, there's another one. That might be enough to make me believe dinosaurs were on the ark. <laughs> well, if it's got that load bearing capacity. <laughs> <laughs> and like, obviously for, for saving myself and not being canceled, um, you know, it, that was him. That was him. They just told me the story and mm. he made was, it up, I heard. I thought it was interesting, yeah. yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly, yeah. So um <laughs> everything is safe after you say the word allegedly. Yeah. I, I hope you get there and it's actually just like a nature conservation. And I've literally got two of every animal and everyone's just like super forward thinking. Just it's there for preservation. <laughs> and what happens if one of the animals gets freaky with the other animal and gets pregnant? Like Oh, they, they can't get rid of it because it's America. Yeah. So they send it over here to our ark. Like, oh no, no, no! They'll just uh, perpetuate it, like God's <laughs> law. Like, yeah, look, this just is nature. Put a hat on it and say it's a different animal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like, I, I really, I, I hope they, I hope they do better soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to be in one of those speaking in tongues churches, like the Scott Morrison Pentecostal churches, when I was a teen as well. Uh. There's a lot going on. There's, there's, I'm a weird guy. Um, I wouldn't recommend that either. I, I've seen so many documentaries in, in the States about the States in all different aspects like that. Uh, oh, forget his name. Um, the one with the glasses. He was famous recently. Louis Theroux? That one. Yeah, the yeah Louis. Jiggle Jiggle. Yeah, Jiggle yeah. Jiggle. I've watched, uh, I found all these episodes on Netflix yeah. about all the different shit that happens in America, like the porn scene, the rap scene, the gangster scene, yeah. all that shit. I feel like I would love to do that sort of stuff. Yeah. Because that, that would be cool, you know? Um, I think you'd be good at that. I just, need, I just need Kevlar and a helmet at all times. Yeah. Especially me with a big target. Yeah, you need a lot of Kevlar. Yeah. yeah. But like the ones about the, uh, the, the free speech um, Nazi, oh my God. With the, with the two girls that they've got singing the songs? <laughs> Fuck me. That's wild. I would just go there, not to just film, but just to like, it's, it's, it's real life. Like it's, I don't know, I don't think they know how much other countries laugh at them and just go, oh, look, America's talking. Let's, yeah. let's, let's, yeah, you know. But there's so many Americans that I admire, respect, and I'm, there's yeah. a lot of friends. And, you know, it's not, uh, unfortunately, they are labeled as a whole. Yeah. There's so many good people that live there too. And they're, they're also, they're, they're inside of it going, what the fuck? I this yeah. I'm so embarrassed about this, you know. So 
Um, and, you know, I've got a friend, he lives in Fort Lauderdale um, over in um, Florida of all places, you know? Yeah. And yeah, I went to Florida and then went, to, went down to Miami. Miami's all right. But like, yeah, it's... I'm looking forward to The Florida. movies just feel like documentaries now. <laughs> yeah. Like, like seriously, they, they really picked up on it. But um, yeah, I reckon, I reckon I'm definitely due back there um, soon. Don't know why, but I just, I think I, I want to go there now, not as a tourist, but as an observer of the people, yeah. which is technically a tourist anyway. But yeah, it's a zoo. It, it, well, it, <laughs> Australia's yeah. the same. Yeah. Like I, I drove past people when I was about... 16, 17, I drove past people having a KKK meeting in the full hoods in central Queensland. In the Queensland? Yeah. Jesus. Queensland's a hotbed of racism. It sucks. Yeah. Was it, was it Towns, Townsworth? Townsville. Townsville? Town, uh, no, Tamworth. Tamworth. But they yeah. have the music festival. Yeah, the country. Apparently, apparently that's super. Oh, I, I can only imagine. Yeah. I'm from the beef capital of Australia. So, you, you know, a lot of beef farmers. Uh, yeah, as you can imagine, not the most progressive place. And, uh, but yeah, it's one of those things where I think, were they, were they just playing ghosts? Like it's such a strange, <laughs> strange thing to see on a Tuesday night. And I, I know I often think, did I, have I invented that? But my sister and cousin were with me and, uh, yeah, it was crazy. So you're going on tour yeah. and how did you land that by the way? Oh, strangely, you, you'd probably be interested in this actually through virtual reality. So during the pandemic, we started a comedy club in VR it's a platform that's since closed, but it's called Alt Space. Everybody looks kind of like a Nintendo Wii character. Yeah. The difference between it as a performer and an audience member, actually, and like a Zoom gig, is that when you're, if, as an audience member, when you look left, there's someone in the crowd next to you. When you look right, there's someone there. They feel collectively part of the crowd. Cool. As a comic, you can look left, look right, you can do crowd work. You either hear them laugh, or if their mic's off, they send emojis flying up into the air. So I met all these acts, um, music producers, all these random people in there because we're all stuck inside. Um, I wanted to keep doing shows. The audiences were all in America, so we were doing these shows in, in our morning for American nighttime. And I've just ended up with connections in Canada and America through that. Wow. And then you're, you're, you're getting flown over? I've got to pay my flights, but it's guaranteed. Transport between shows, accommodation, um, guaranteed pay. Cool. Um, yeah, it's good. So, so is there like a sponsor behind that or? Just booking agents that I've met, other comics and their bookers and yeah. Wow. I need to get a booking agent. Yeah. <laughs> I need a bet. I need one here. <laughs> Shout out to Century. Hook your boy up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so you've got that going on and you obviously got Fringe here. Yeah. So welcome back to Perth. Thank you, sir. And you're a receptionist. I am, yeah. Um, where do you see yourself at 47? Hopefully alive. Yes. Which I never thought I'd say at 27. Yeah. Um, I, my my short term, like within the next five years is pay my mortgage, mm -hmm. which is getting there. It should be paid in the next two or three years. Buy a caravan and live on the road, just driving between shows. And then the rest of the year is either in, in Europe uh, or the States, Canada, um, doing shows and then just sort of the nomad life. I don't have kids. Um, I don't know that that's going to happen for me because I have worked as a special needs carer and in childcare and all that over the years as well. I understand what it takes to raise kids and unless I'm going to do it properly, I'm never going to do it. Yeah, you got to find someone that you're willing to have kids with, and, yet alone kids. And it's the, the – working with kids, I realise how many lives could be changed with an I love you and a sandwich in the morning. And um, – also, given my <laughs> given my head issues, the likelihood of my kid having them is pretty high. So, at least I won't be causing the environmental issues like my dad or whatever did, and hopefully they don't have any murders in their lives. Um, but I, I I care too much to 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 fuck it up. My sister, I see what she does with my nieces, and I'm like, hey, if I don't have kids, that's fine. I've got them; they're they're the best. So it's just I just want to keep doing what I'm doing. Um, get make my act better two or more, um, and get to a point where I can live entirely off, off what I create. Yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. And stay happy and grateful. Stay happy and grateful. That is good. That is good. And, um, what's something else in your life that you do that's, you know, that kind of distracts you? Music. 
Music? Yeah. yeah. So I've been releasing music since 2005, I think was our first EP in my band. Um, and that's like, I know you, so you say you don't meditate. You said that earlier. Um, do you have things that are meditative? So like for me, archery is meditative. There's no room for anything except the task. Yes. Editing, it's, creating music yeah. is the same for me. Yeah. Editing is one. Um, I, I play guitar for over 15 years, so there's that, but I'd, really pick it up at the moment because I'm lazy. Um, but um, for me, like, I can't wait to go back to snowboarding. Snowboarding is one of them. Yep. I want to do that more often. I want to do that in the summer here because it's winter there. Yep. And then in the winter here because it's like New Zealand or something. And, yeah, I want to do that three, four times a year. That's my, okay. that's my like, goal. Um, I used to play video games. That was a good one. But then everybody's just too fucking good on there and, anymore and I play to win and if I, if I wanted to play, I play properly and then all of a sudden I'm, I'm an e-gamer. I don't want to be an e-gamer. Yep. I want to be a casual gamer that just chops. <laughs> no such thing unless you're like some freak but you may as well make money and be an e-gamer, you know, that's yeah. how it works. Yeah, you're either good at something, you're either good at something naturally and eventually you just become a professional and then it's not as fun anymore. Or you do it casually and you go, oh, I don't know, what's the point? Yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, each their own. Um, but yeah, the music, gig, the music gig, I remember 20, I think it was 2007 as well, around about the same time Call of Duty 4 came out, Modern Warfare, the original, yeah. greatest game of all time. And Guitar Hero, Guitar Hero 3 okay. came out. And that's where I learned a lot about music. Really? Yeah. I could never play it. Yeah. Guitar oh, Hero? I was, I, I, I was a god. I was playing fucking Through Fire and Flames on Expert and everything. Because I, I knew how to play a lot of the songs on guitar. Yeah. And it just fried my brain. I could never not get my head around it. I, I transitioned to guitar because oh, of that right. game. Okay. So I was like, oh, I actually would like to play guitar now. Yeah. So the Post Malone, same story, except I didn't go down the – uh, superstar fame and tattoos on my head. Um, Give it time. Yeah. Keen to see him on Sunday. That's going to be a sick gig. Oh, yeah. Is that it's still not happened here? No. Oh, cool. No, it's, it's happening. And God, I, had, I wish I had Posty on the show. That'd be sick. But um, Give yeah, it a whirl. they're coming. They're coming. Is that yeah. with the Chili Willies? Chili Willies, yeah. Actually, funny story. Last year we were in Europe visiting my wife's family. She's Dutch. So okay. we're in, we were in the Netherlands and – we, uh, before the trip as well, we realized that the Red Hot Chili Peppers were going to be in Paris okay. at the same time. So we did like a mid-trip uh, detour to Paris for three days. So we stayed in Paris for a bit and then we went to St. Denis, which is a fucking hole. Um, but that's where the stadium is. Okay. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we went to see the Chili Peppers. Anderson Pack was there. Okay. Um, Wonder Cat was playing. Um, and then, yeah. but a uh, weird bill. Was it a festival? No, it was just okay. Yeah, just two two acts and then the headliners. Yeah. So, but I was stoked to see Anderson because I'm a big fan. And uh, but yeah, the whole time because the French are like all chain smokers. eh? yeah, I felt like I needed to get some chemo afterwards because I definitely got cancer. Yeah, but um, the funniest part was we were in the crowd waiting for the chilies to to go up, and the chili tickets were announced that same day in Australia. For, for this coming oh, weekend. All right. So we booked, I got my phone out and booked tickets to the same people that we're about to see <laughs> back yeah, home in Australia. Australia. That's great. It was, a, it was a unique kind of like, you know, you're a fan. Yeah. Um, but we got Golden Circle tickets this time because the last two times, or well, I've seen them three times. One was a big day out the first time I saw them. Um, and that was way at the back. And then the last two times we were like, you know, they have the two sections now, so there's no crowd crush, yeah. which is good. Um, right now I'm like, no, I want Golden Circle. I'm, 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 here to, I'm here to potentially hurt people accidentally and potentially be hurt by someone else accidentally. Yeah, maybe not accidentally. Yeah, Who no. knows how it goes? <laughs> oh, maybe they don't play your favourite song. Uh, mosh Pits, man. I love Mosh Pits. <laughs> I was born for them. Oh, yeah, dude. I'm, I'm undefeated. Yeah. All time. How you're like, you're how's like your a, toe going there, Sev? Yeah, my toe's fucking black. I've got socks on, but you're like yeah. the guy in the uh, in the UFC that's allowed to take steroids in the mosh pit environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I see you walking towards the f mosh pit, and I'm like, for fuck's sake, really? I'm gonna end up behind him. Yeah, 
Yeah. But we're, we're doing circle pits and shit. Yeah, that's, and uh, that's acceptable. I mean, my favorite, my favorite time was the wall of death. Um, that's good fun. Pierce the veil, sound wave. I think it was 2012. And I was like, oh, what's this? Everyone's spread out. Oh, were you not informed of the wall of death? No, but I, I knew about it, <laughs> but I was like, oh, fuck. But I was a bit nervous. I was like, all right, is this where, is this it? Is this where I die? Yeah. And I was at the front and we're waiting for the drop. And I saw, see this guy across from me and we just start charging at each yeah, other. And then fun. the last, sec last second he realizes he fucked up. And I just went, you know, a little bit of a shoulder and yeah. boom, <laughs> through, through the crowd. He, he lived. He lived. He um, but it lives in our memories. Yeah. Our yeah, it lives in our memories. But um, you get those other mosh pits where you get these like weird um, hardcore bands. Oh, the that fight are, dancing? Yeah. Oh, oh the fight dancing, man. So I don't good. get it. I don't get it either. I just I love – they're fun to watch. Yeah. Why are you here? Yeah. Join just, the gym. Like those, those are the ones that needed to – um, express their anger <laughs> yeah. through, you know, pumping iron or playing Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, not spin kicking strangers in the head no. during a breakdown. Yeah, um, or, or no, actually funny times is when um, there are people that are unaware of them and they decide <laughs> to walk through the void. <laughs> you just see this dressed up emo looking girl with pink hair, it's always them, yeah. like – makeup drooping down the cheeks you know one of those ones goth gothic emo sort yeah. of chicks and she's just like looking for a friend and like looking around and then bang foot to the face you're just like yeah fuck's sake i love the guy that's um <laughs> just shit hammered in the middle of the wall of death yes and he hasn't noticed any one part he's just standing there and then you just see <laughs> boos, like moses closing they the call river. it the bait yeah <laughs> they call it the bait in a mosh pit yeah i remember i was reading some forums back in the day when i was getting into festivals i was like i'm gonna research this just in case and yeah someone wrote a whole like essay about different types of pits <laughs> okay. circle pit mosh pit uh death pit wall of death all this yeah. shit some other shit and i'm just like fuck I remember I saw, saw this photo of, um, uh, of this back, someone's back, and it had Slayer like etched out. In, in blood, yeah. In blood. That, yeah. And I was like, fuck, imagine going to a Slayer concert. Like if you go to Slayer, do you die? That was the misconception that I did, that I had. And then when I went to a Slayer concert, but it was, but it was in Australia, I was like, I can imagine Slayer in the prime in America would have been fucked. Like you're there. I've got a story, but yeah, keep yeah. going. So I went to Slayer and it was sick. Yeah. And then I, 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 love, I love crowd surfing because yeah. I was like, I wonder if I can crowd surf being 6'10". There's a lot more volume of That's, me to grab yeah, on. Yeah. And it was, it was dope, but I crowd surfed to Slayer, Raining Blood. I remember that moment because I had, uh, just before iPhones all came out, I had one of those point and shoot cameras. Uh -huh. I got to find the footage. It's like two megapixel potato quality, but I was just like, fuck <laughs> yeah, Slayer. But yeah, tell me about your Slayer story. So it's it's not it's not my story, but it's my friend. So my friend that got me into metal saw Slayer, and I think it was two thousand at Festival Hall in Brisbane. Yeah, and um, he it was like what you describe as an American pit. Oh, and he's been shit. to he's been to whatever. But he said when they started, the, um, a bunch of dudes ripped the chairs out from the balcony and threw them over, and there were people diving from the balcony into the into the crowd. And there was two guys that came after work in full suits and he saw them afterwards and they were just torn to shreds. Um, I've got bitten by a crackhead at a gig once in Brisbane. Uh, <laughs> Tell me about that. <laughs> I was one from the barrier and there was a girl in front of me and this guy was like punching into us and you, but you sort of stuck. And then he was carrying on like hitting us and stuff and everybody around. And so she was wrapping him on the knuckles with the drumstick she caught. And um, he thought it was me, so he bit me on the shoulder. So I spent the whole concert thinking, like, what have I got now? Yeah, I need a tetanus shot. Yeah, I enjoy this, but also I'd enjoy not having, you know, yeah. whatever he's got, yeah. which I assume is a lot. <laughs> and then he stole the drumstick from her and was like, I'll probably feel bad about this one day, but I don't now. Just with those eyes, I'm like, man. <laughs> Oh, man, I remember um, figuring out where the optimal drumstick zone would be. <laughs> And I would have – my zone would be much wider. Yeah. Because as soon as I see it up in the air, 
Because I played footy. Just, I'm just marking like, people. taking a mark, taking a screamer <laughs> off someone. I've taken some speckies, eh? <laughs> but like sometimes, sometimes it would land uh, in front, in like a, a few people in front of me. Yeah. But because it's got forward momentum, it kind of bounces. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> someone's head or something went bang and then blop. Nice. And then like I remember someone else where it like slipped through their fingers and I got it. And they like, looked at me like, like for a split second, like, I touch, but I touched yeah, it. Yeah, I got in there, I can see it in their eyes. Like they're going to ask me like, but I touched yeah. it. And I'm like, but I fucking got it. Yeah. But my fav- favourite ones was when there's two people that grab it clean. Oh, yeah. And they try to – and it's always always someone that has it with two hands and someone else has it with one wow. in the middle. I'm like, it's either going to snap or you just got just to gotta go for it. Yeah. Just got to go MMA on that, on that shit, get them to tap out. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that, that's a wild shit. But I've got like a good 10 drumsticks. I had, um, uh, I think it was southbound. It was just, like early set on like the second day. It was like ballpark music, so it's like a chill, like chill band. <laughs> and uh, my mate was standing in front of me. He's like maybe five foot nine. I'm six two for reference. And I just see like this drumstick just come straight towards us and pin him square in the face. And he starts pissing out blood. And the girl next to him just goes, <laughs> "Hey, drumstick, woo!" <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. And then when they like. Frisbee um, picks. Yeah. It, like I remember one, one of my first ever picks I collected, the, the, the guitarist like flicked it and like no one else noticed. I've seen that. A and few I was times. like, I was like, fuck. So I'm like fucking swimming through the crowd. Actually, it's like this. I'm like above them. And then I get to the spot where I reckon it is and there it is. I'm like, oh. Yeah. And they're like, what the fuck? Have you ever got one off someone's shoulder? I have. No. Nah. I'm, I'm like, where'd that go? And then I see it on their shoulder in front of Let's me. Grab them. Thank you. <laughs> and there's some chick, and then you, and then she, oh, you assaulted me. Oh, pet pet peeve at, at, at festivals. Go. People who film the whole fucking thing. <laughs> yes. Just watch it. They have a DVD. Watch that when you get home. <laughs> a quick clip. It's fine. Oh, I'm getting fired up. A quick clip. Go nuts. Photo. Go nuts. Like if you're doing like, hey man, wish you were here. Awesome. Yeah. We all wish someone was there. Yes. We all wish a lot of them would leave too. Yes. <laughs> but uh, if you're they filmed the whole fucking thing. Yeah. What? I don't get it. Yeah. No. And I've done that where I've filmed a clip of a song and then watched it back and realized that it ruined it for me because I was so into the vibe that when I watched it back, I realized the guitarist was playing poorly. Um, it was all the singing Osborne. was shit. Singing was shit. And if I hadn't taken that little clip, I would have deluded myself through to the atmosphere. Yeah. yeah I don't, I don't f- film shit anymore except for like – one moment just to just to go back to yeah that was that time to it's like a ticket to yeah, yeah. to a memory otherwise forgotten so yeah I did that and but like yesterday for going back to the LeBron James game there's a photo of the moment he took the shot and all around everyone's got their phone and there's one guy courtside sitting right next to LeBron's two sons they they've got their phone out as well and he's just just sitting there casually just enjoying the moment like the guy is watching it yeah. He's actually there. Yeah. Yeah. And and I uh, I I had didn't have my phone. I had my phone on me and I recorded the first bit of like the start of the game, a little top of the corner, LeBron 36 points. I was like, all right, it's go time. And then the rest of it, I was just watching it. There was a there was a moment where um, Josh Giddy, because he's Australian, he elbowed ac- uh, LeBron accidentally in the first quarter yeah. and it looked pretty bad. So I got I filmed that. But then Two points to go. I'm like, I'm watching it. I'm watching this like in per in person, yeah. live on the TV. But it's as good as I could get. And then I was like, Oh, he did it! And then everyone else had their phones out and shit. And it's so and then weird. Now on TikTok, all I'm seeing is just people recording the moment on the TV. Like, I mean, fair enough. I used to do that, but now I'm like, What's the point? Because I'm the same. I look back at these videos, and like Red Hot Chili Peppers, the current tour, right? I'm seeing a few um, clips on TikTok. And then people are just complaining about like how Anthony isn't sounding the same or uh, how he's playing guitar poorly. John's playing guitar poorly. I'm like, dude, do you realize the studio is so much different to live and your phone, a microphone is not fucking quality, dumb yeah. fuck. So, so bad. Yeah. So, and yeah, I'm, <laughs> my cardio terrible <laughs> right now. 
we went to Ryan and I went to um, uh, Offspring last year. Oh, it was our Christmas party. <laughs> Sum Forty One was good, but I wish I did not spend any energy at Sum Forty One because oh. by the time Offspring came out, I was fucked. Were they good? Because the live footage I've seen of the Offspring is were, still pretty good. They were great. They were amazing, and and Sum Forty One still slapped as well. Um, but my cardio, it was like <laughs> first twenty seconds. You're like, fuck yeah, I love this song. Yeah, <sighs> I'm gonna die. And then and then you would like stop, and you're like. All right, last chorus of the song, I'm going all out. And then te- for 10 seconds max, you're good, and then you're fucked again. Um, and the older I get, the more that mosh pit smell bothers yeah. me. And yeah. when you're feeling like, oh, man, I'm unfit, I need to get out of here, and you can smell 400 sweaty dudes around you, it's unpleasant. Yeah, but you, you love it. <laughs> yeah. You pay your ticket to be in that spot. <laughs> yeah. And then you see all these teeny boppers, you're like, why the fuck are you here? And then you ask them, and then they're like, oh, my parents – my parents grew me up on this music. I was like, that's good. Respect. I love that. Yeah, respect. I mean, I'm 32, so I could easily have a kid that's 10 at yeah. least by now, and they would be fucking singing Zepp, Zeppelin yeah. Zeppelin songs and a bit of Leonard Skinner, you know, yeah. a bit of the decent music. Because right now I don't have anything that's come out. I, I've got this uh, gig uh, I'm doing uh, some – Influencer shit on Sunday at yeah. Laneway Festival. Okay, cool. Never been to Laneway, and I had a look at the uh, the acts. No fucking clue who they are. So do you have to research them? <laughs> a little bit. Oh, that sucks. I hated doing that when I was in radio. Oh, but um, yeah, it's it's an interesting one, and it's going to be an interesting day because Sunday is UFC at the start, yeah. and then middle of the day until five is um, Laneway. Yep. And then from from five after it's Posty and uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Shit, that's a big. Day. So yeah, I'm not. I don't. I, don't, I didn't secure to get to the UFC, so I don't care. <laughs> Fuck them. But uh, yeah, it was meant to be like a chill day, chill <laughs> Sunday, and now I'm just like, fuck. What am I gonna do? Even like old mate Logan Paul and KSI are in town. Like it's a big no weekend. Shit. Yeah. Wow. Cuz cuz Prime is the ah, there yeah. is no affiliation fuck Prime. It's just another drink, you know. Sparkling water. Shout outs to Coca-Cola that I think is shit anyway. Mount Franklin's my favorite mountain though if they want to sponsor me. Um, yeah. Happy to go there. Yeah, and I don't mind the Franklin too. Does Mount Franklin exist? Is it a real place? Let's have a look. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go and research, make a doco about it. That being said, Seb, we should definitely like buy and hoard that prime shit and sell it, send it to the UK. Correct. Because those kids are absolutely insane. Correct. Correct. So, yeah. So, you know where Midvale is? Yeah. Right next to Midland? Mm-hmm. They're having a drop at 6.30 on Saturday of the dra- – and the, this, this podcast will be live well after that, so it doesn't care. Yeah. It doesn't matter. But <laughs> – of all places, Midvale, Midvale. is where they're going to drop. Yeah, Midvale Shopping Centre in Woolworths, Logan Paul and KSI will be, and there's going to be thousands what? of children. Who organised this? I know. <laughs> I know. I got, the, I got the call up early because I got invited to, to do some influencer shit. Huh. And I, like, I was like, this is an opportunity. I don't want to feel like I'm a clout chaser, but it'd be cool to at least meet KSI. Because I never liked Logan Paul. And I'm not hating on him. It's just my personal, like, if he was in front of me, I'd shake his hand and I'd be like, hey, man, good for you. You just don't – it's just not a vibe you connect with. No, like, he's he's done well to get out of all that shit that he did, like, years ago. And (laughs) and allegedly now he's a scammer from the crypto shit because he's scammed heaps of – he did a rug pull on fucking some coin that he did. Uh This is all allegedly, you know, like, the internet's the internet, you know. Nobody knows you're a dog. Um, No, there's a lot of evidence. And there's a lot of, yeah, a lot of evidence, but um, the, the business side of it, the, the attention seeking side of it, I, I'm like, yeah, you've done well. Yeah. But the, the thing about it that pisses me off is all these kids that are going to go there, they don't have that critical thinking of why he's famous or what value he brings to them. Yeah. So this is why I'm doing podcasts like this. Yeah. This is why as that audience grows – they can grow with me mm-hmm. and I can start giving them value because mm-hmm. I don't want to fucking do this like skits and shit anymore. I don't do it anymore. I do fun stuff every now and then, but I want educational driven mm. stuff. That's fun. Oh, it's called edutainment. Yeah, right? yeah. There's no like I-, I ask kids all the time, what do you like about Logan Paul? Or what do you like about me as well? And they're like, oh, you're funny. I'm like, okay. Ten years from now, 
what sort of value does that bring? You know? Yeah. But then I look back at like Jim Carrey, for example. Best example. This guy, this guy's an all time. I, I got a lot of humor from him and he made me laugh when I was younger. And now he's, uh, a lot of people say he's off his rocket because he's all philosophical and he goes, we're just spirits floating around. Mm. Like, who, how, how, are we really here? And all this shit. And I'm just like, I vibe with that. Me too. Because it makes me think. I was wondering where you were going. Yeah, it I'm makes like, me think. I vibe with that yeah, shit. Yeah, it makes me think. It's a man at peace. Yeah. And I vibe with that, yeah. you know. He's not chasing the bag anymore. He just wants to make art. Yeah. I, like, I'd love to have a conversation with him, but then he'd be like, is this microphone even here? <laughs> yeah. I think he might, yeah. At a point, you're like, yeah, dude, we get it. You yeah. smell yeah. like patchouli. I'm proud of you, yeah. but- yeah. Tell me about Ace Ventura. But that's that's what <laughs> I want to really kind of get to where I'm where I'm going to help kids and they go, oh, that's that video I, I saw about Sev's thoughts on getting my first car. Thank fuck I saw that video because it made me think, is a $30,000 loan on a brand new car worth as much as buying a $5,000 third-hand car from the car yard down mm-hmm. the road? That's the sort of shit I want to yeah. help them with. Not just buy my f- drink that has just – all this shit in it yeah. that you're only buying because I'm cool and you you want to yeah. be the hype. You have the fear of missing out. Like, no, like if I had my own drink, it would be some some sort of sparkling water mm-hmm. like this. And I know kids don't like sparkling water, so it'd be funny. Yeah. But like, have you heard of that death liquid, liquid death drink? Yeah, I don't know what just, it is. It's though. just water. Oh. It's literally just water. They've just marketed it differently. Oh. And it's like one of the top, top brands in the world now. Mm-hmm. They've got merchant shit. Yeah. It confuses me. They don't have it here yet, so maybe I can pull up a deal and get, yeah. get Liquid Death to sponsor the podcast and I'll fucking have Liquid Death, you yeah. know. Get a sparkling version of Liquid Death. Get some Liquid Sev. Liquid Sev. <laughs> liquid Sev, yeah. Liquid Sev. That sounds like something else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm, I'm down for attention. I'm down for Liquid Sev. He can sponsor me. <laughs> sponsor me anytime. That's it. That's it. <laughs> All right. How do we find your um, your shows, and um, when when can we expect a Netflix special? <laughs> Never. Um, the Netflix <laughs> special is dead unless you're already one of the people that gets paid for Netflix specials. It's all about YouTube. Um, that's why guys that I'm looking that I look towards are Mark Norman, Ari Shafir, um, Sam Marill. They've all got. That's how that they've done it. Is release it for free. Let people find it. So that's that's that what's coming up there. My show here will be done by then, by the time this comes out. But the shows in America, follow me at Old Mate Douglas on all the socials, um, YouTube, any of that. Uh, listen to my hip hop stuff. It's funny. It's fun. Some of it's really dark and twisted, and so are you. So, yeah, nice. Listen, if you can leave them with one quote or a piece of advice, what would it be? Um. I've got two. One is a positive attitude may not get you anywhere in life, but it'll annoy enough people to make it worth the effort. And the other one is, uh, I don't know, man, just love yourself and love your friends and um, just be happy. Love that. Or work hard so that you can be happy at least. You know, you're not going to be happy every day, but fucking try. That's it. And and make sure that, yeah, you look after yourself first because if you're not good – for yourself, you can't. You're not good for anybody else. No, you got to be selfish to to be altruistic. Yes. Yeah. Like that. Mm. So, uh, old mate Douglas, Hayden Douglas, that's me. Hit him up. His uh, his uh, real last name is uh, Mitten. Hurtful, like a glove. <laughs> I'm gonna wear him like a glove for saying that on air. <laughs> <laughs> so you can stalk his old MySpace account. Yeah. If you, can, if you can retrieve the music and stuff from it, please do, because I've got some songs on there that are pretty good <laughs> that I can't get off. So feel free to stalk. And uh, if you see him on the street, um, don't ask him for gear. Yeah, um, I'm out. Oh, actually, one more thing. Yeah. You can do this. Um, what's on your feet? Show us. Oh, the grapes. I don't, I'm not as much of a sneakerhead as you are. Mate, the grape vibes. Uh, uh, put them one more, up one more time. They've got a bit of – I'm embarrassed. Yeah. I've got a scuff on them. No, you're wearing them. That's I'm up, fine. I'm upset. Don't be embarrassed. Showing off my legs. So too. the Grape Fives, they're, they're a classic. They're a, they're a sought-after pair and, um, you know, um, they're coming back hard in style. The Fives especially, the silhouette. I get a lot of compliments from them. Yeah. Uh, 
always from dudes, which yeah. is perfect. You know, that's yeah, what perfect. I'm going for. Yeah, perfect. Ugly dudes. Ugly dudes yeah. who which, love shoes. Yeah. That's why, that's why I do what I do, just to build my network of um, ugly dudes. That's ugly why dudes. I'm here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. See, we've got a new friend. <laughs> Shout outs to all the people involved with everything. Um, shout outs to Plus Two for giving me shirts. And shout outs to, not these guys, shout outs to Hunt and Brew for giving me coffee. Um, they just give me coffee and I drink it and it's nice. And uh, shout outs to Douglas for being here. Thank you, sir. And uh, being here, like just genuinely. Um, he's made it through, he's gone through shit and uh, internally and externally. And he survived. And uh, good luck in America. Thank you, sir. And I'm keen to see what comes out of it. I'd love to do another one of these, which isn't so heavy one day. Yeah. So I've got part way through. I'm like, fuck, this is morbid. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's good. <laughs> People need to hear it. But yeah, we'll, yeah, that's true. We'll, uh, we'll have some fairy floss and, yeah. uh, you know, just, you know, have some children sitting in the background so we're a little bit more cautious. That sounds horrible. About yeah, that. sure. <laughs> I get a, my working with children's check, so I'm good. Um, oh, no, never mind. I'll do that. <laughs> As always, good thanks. <laughs> <I> was- <laughs>